Welcome back to Robo Sub 15. We've just finished up two days of semi-finals qualifying. Each team that qualified got one run per day on the competition course. These runs are scored by a team of expert judges, composed of volunteers from the sponsoring organizations such as the Office of Naval Research. Each team's best scoring run from their two sessions is used as their finals entry score. In addition, teams who hadn't yet qualified duked it out all day on the practice course today for a chance at four wildcard qualifying slots. Here's a play-by-play -play of all the semi-finals action. The University of Alberta's ARVP team overcame compass problems in their first run to maintain a fixed heading through the start gate in their second. Utah State ran into the software equivalent of a titanic iceberg on their first run when they lost their mission planner's source code right before getting in the water. Then a dead motor controller sank their second attempt. The University of Florida's subjugator had the Circus Maximus crowd on its feet during both their semi-finals sessions. The robot scored points on training, the Gladiator Arena, at Tu Brute, and crowning the Emperor. I'm feeling pretty good right now. We've definitely had two pretty good runs that we're definitely very happy with, but um, we're expecting really tough competition, particularly from uh, the other two t top teams, Cornell and ETS, uh, especially after their last year performance and then seeing what they're doing this year. Uh, we know it's going to be really exciting in the finals. Mount San Antonio College conquered motor failures in their first run to secure a start gate traversal, putting them temporarily in second place. In their second session, they completed the gate and one path element. Virginia Tech lost critical systems in the water in their first session and weren't able to work all the kinks out by their second, but still claimed points for a start gate. The University of Maryland had to overcome more obstacles than most teams, as they had arrived to find their robot's main computer destroyed in transit. They managed to find the right model on Craigslist and went on to successfully crown the correct emperor. In shipping, we ended up having the torpedo launchers were cracked. The computer had some IC snap off so that we could no longer communicate Firewire and we actually had to track down someone on Craigslist who had the exact same model computer, drive over, test his computer, hand him the money, come back, image this machine, oh it was crazy. Home team San Diego City Robotics had vision code issues, so we're happy to use Dead Reckoning to go through the start gate and towards the Octagon, their best result yet with this robot. The Russians have some experience with emperors, as Far Eastern Federal University proudly demonstrated by surfacing in the correct Imperial Palace Octagon on both their scoring attempts. They exacted a red buoy and an obstacle as tribute along the way. The force was strong with North Carolina State, as their robotic TIE bomber demonstrated the power of the dark side to the red buoy and crushed the rebellion of the obstacle course. Indian Institute of Technology Bombay hit the yellow buoy just after their time ran out in their first session. In their second, they did it on the clock. The University of Central Florida's robot made it through the gate, but then suddenly decided to practice chariot racing turns at the bottom of the pool. Carl Hayden High School's Falcon robot demonstrated the consistency of a Centurion, scoring the gate and a training buoy on each mission attempt. Harbin Engineering University showed that you can never assume you've had the last Emperor, as they motored through the yellow buoy and an obstacle to the palace to crown a new one. The USC team found itself under a sword of Damocles when a diver accidentally killed the run as the robot was on track for an obstacle after the red buoy. They had a choice between keeping the points or resetting the clock, they chose the points. Amador Valley High School's robot roared through the gate like a hungry lion in the circus, but leaped too far over the buoys each time. Last year's champions, ETS Team Sonia, had sonar problems on their first run, so took on a defensive strategy in the second. Two buoys, the obstacle, at Tu Brute and the Gladiator Arena had them giving a thumbs up. Reykjavik University sacrificed most of their points risking a rerun on Friday, but earned them back on Saturday by spearing the red training buoy. The Cornell robot came down like a Capitoline wolf on the fold, ripping through the entire course on Saturday with the best performance of the entire semifinals. At the end, they fed Caesar one grape, attempted the second, and surfaced in the correct octagon without quite enough time to pick up the laurel wreath. Southern Polytechnic State University qualified on Saturday to take the first of the wildcard slots. The team partied like it was Lupercalia when they got through the gate. Green meant go on the Appian Way for the US Naval Academy as they consistently targeted the green buoy and made it through the obstacle. First time competitors Meladalen University from Sweden shot through the gate like a rat out of an aqueduct, collecting the red buoy on day one and the yellow on day two. Washington State University went through the gate on the training course on Saturday afternoon to qualify at the last minute for the second wildcard slot. They were happy to repeat their performance on the competition course. Embry-Riddle suffered a disconnected pressure sensor on their first run, 
leaving them without depth control. On their second, they made it through the gate, but compass problems drifted them outside the Empire. The third and final wildcard slot was first claimed by Fuvie from Spain. Displaying the honor befitting a legionary, they released the slot to another team as their computer had died and better performance was impossible. Montana State University qualified for it and managed to get through the gate. These are going to be the most exciting Robo Sub finals yet, and you'll be able to see everything up close and in real time on our live webcast from 1 to 5 p.m. Pacific Time, Sunday, July 22, right here at Robosub.org. We've got a vast number of cameras in and out of the water, and you'll be able to ask the teams questions while the robots tackle the course. Who's going to claim the victor's wreath in the historic Ides of Robosub? Watch it here Sunday at Robosub.org.